Textiles are a feature of every Affinity app. Currently, you can utilize these to kind of make your designs more modular and more scalable, for lack of a better term. And the, the way they work is to think of them as presets for specific textiles that you create at each moment of a design. So say you want to repeat that or reuse it later, that is a great use case for this. It's similar to character styles in any other Adobe program, these can be quite powerful in comparison. So to demonstrate, I have just a basic document here with some content and maybe a heading type of font. Uh, we're using Avenir for the font family. To access textiles in the app, it's not shown by default, but if you go to View Studio Textiles, you'll get this panel. And you may have some here by default. I went ahead and deleted those just because I, I don't plan to utilize them. This panel, it, lets you essentially create everything from paragraph styles to character styles to group styles and update those in real time. You can also delete those, of course. Within it, if you have any layer selected, it'll show you the context of what settings are in play. Here you can reset the formatting to default. I think the default is Arial at the moment. So far I have zero textiles initiated here. To create one, we can simply go ahead and select the layer and I'll do this middle one here, create character style. When you click on that, a dialogue pops up asking you what to name the style first. So let's just call it our heading one. You could base this on another character style if you have any or, or no style if you're looking for something of relation there. Typically I try to base each style on its own if possible, but the power is there if that is what you want to do. You can also reassign this to a paragraph or a group if you don't want the character setting itself. So lots of settings you can you can utilize here. Before you just go ahead and save, uh, you might toy with those just to get everything clarified to your own liking. Like maybe I don't want 100% black on my colors. Uh, say I work in web a lot, I use hex code characters and I don't like to use all the way black so I'll do like a three 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 three, three color code it's black but not quite a hundred percent you can adjust kerning tracking uh, baseline horizontal scale a lot of settings here so it's something to look into you can get into variants and figures capitals all this stuff based on the font library you're using of course same is true for paragraphs. So say I like what we have here. Uh, we can go ahead and apply that style by clicking this. So it should update in real time. It's kind of like a preview of what you're doing. And then we'll hit OK. So then you'll see this new preset here, which is what we called it heading one. Say at any time I want to add a new new heading. And let's assume it's I have this set differently, like a different font, size, color, weight, and maybe We'll do red so we'll just do um welcome to the new video series on affinity photo okay so that at that point that's a whole new style at this at this neck of the woods i can go ahead and either create a new one or go back and revert to this style so say i want to use what I created, I simply click on this text style and it's ready to go. Uh, because this text is artistic text, I don't actually have the ability to just shrink it. It'll actually skew, which isn't what we want. So I can either just click inside and do that to get the line break or just adjust it manually. So as I see this line height here or letting in other words for print sake uh, i'm not quite fond of this biggest gap here it seems a little too much so say i want to edit that go ahead and double click the same style and you can go back in and any time and edit these so i think this setting would be under here position and transform by default lettings pretty much auto all the time so you can go ahead and adjust this to your liking and you'll notice it updates in real time too which is very unique to affinity products which i love so let's go with 20 points i think that's a little more suitable let's do that one more time again do using maybe a different 
size, book, uh, this color. Just an idea of some text there. Say we don't like what we just rendered, so let's go back to using our style. If we break line again, it's set with that new setting. So that's great. So at any time you can go ahead and assign this with one click as opposed to going up, changing fonts, changing the size, changing the weights, adjusting the letting. You can see how much time you could save if you have that set up to begin with. I definitely recommend it if you're finding yourself repeating yourself a lot. That's basic character styles. What about paragraph styles? So here I have just a paragraph with filler text. If you resize it, it basically resizes the text in it. If you were to want to add filler text, which I've covered in a different video, you can go ahead and just go to the text menu and insert filler text. And if this actual text field needs to be the text frame tool. So when you go ahead and use that, make sure you drag out the frame and then enter filler text like so. So just like that. Obviously that's not the style we're after, so I'm gonna delete it. Let's say I like this font. Um, maybe I want to change the font to something more suitable. Maybe Baskerville, kind of like a book rendering. Maybe I don't like the letting though, so let's adjust that. I'll open the character panel for this and make that a little higher in size. Maybe a little less. I think the size is a little large too. We'll go back to 15 points. Go down to 20. And let's just kind of make this feel like a book maybe. Something like so. Okay, so we have our heading character style. Let's make a paragraph style with this setting in place. So to make one, you simply need to go ahead and look for the paragraph symbol. And if you hover over it, it should just show you what it actually is. It's create paragraph style. So I'll do that. And I'll just honestly call this body content. And you can base this on another setting, which in this case I don't want to do because that's a completely different look and feel. Uh, so we'll go ahead and use no style on that. And everything to me it looks good as is since we preset that. But again, you can always go back and reset these or change things if you prefer. So I'll go ahead and save it for now. And there it is right there. Say somewhere along the way, we for some reason changed that font just to see what it looked like. Maybe adjust the size. Went with a sans serif type of font. Maybe we set decide or someone decides they don't like that. So we're back to where we started with our body content. And it's the size updates, the weight updates, all of those things update in real time. So you've always got those presets handy. So you can see just how powerful that really is. So if you're creating maybe a publication or a book layout or anything of that nature, poster art, something that deals with typography, which is most graphics, this can be very useful if you don't want to be repeating yourself too often. So say we want to save this down as a default. Uh, you can actually import other styles as well. Uh, so, so say we save these. When you do that save feature, each time you open this styles panel, it's going to be there for you. So that's a cool little feature there. You can also delete them, of course, if you don't want those as default. So here we have it grayed out now since those are our defaults. So if I were to close this file, I'll save it real quick and I'll open it again and then those are there by default so no matter what we do if we create a new document for instance maybe another letter size there they are again so they're still there for us if you don't want those there go ahead and click detach and delete all styles and we'll basically lose those so that's going to be gone anytime we open a different file but in this one we still have them so a quick overview of text styles in Affinity Photo. You can do group styles as well. Those apply to obviously grouped elements and that's specific to the group. So I don't know that I need to show that context, but I think it's self-explanatory in the sense that if you create a group and decide you need specific styles for said group, you can go ahead and make those 
um, whatever you want. So say if you want to change the text field to something different, you could do that and go ahead and utilize it. 